Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Blackmagic Fusion. Now, I've done several tutorials already on the Lissajou curve concept, but somebody asked if I could create a 3D, a fully 3D version, and I thought that would be kind of interesting to show. Lissajou is interesting enough in itself, but when you enter the realm of 3D, you appreciate how the effect actually creates beautiful knots in which the Z position interweaves with the X and Y in a very satisfying way. So anyway, let's have a look at how it's all done. So the first thing I'd like to do is make a particle. So I'm going to select fast noise and I'm going to set it to 50 pixels square. And it looks like that. I want to set its color one alpha to one. And I want to add a circular elliptical mask, I should say, to it. And set that to one for the width and height. And then to the fast noise, I'm going to add a vortex. And let's increase the size to a one. And then let's just adjust the power a bit, negative 0.22 or something. Okay, so then we can make a particle emitter. And let's first of all set the style to bitmap so that we can use the particle element that we've just created there. Let's also add a particle render node to the output of that. And while we're at it, let's add a 3D merge. Could be needing one of those later on. Okay, so let's come back to the particle emitter. Let's set its size to 0.06. Let's come over to the controls and let's type an expression for the number. So if, that's double I, F, open brackets, time is less than 630, comma, 1, comma, 0, close brackets. Now let's come over to region. And what we want to do is we want to set up the translation, and this is where the, the shape is being created. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is create a three by two by seven Lissajou shape. And this gives a, a fairly classic shape. I mean, there are lots of different ones you could try out. I'm just gonna go with this one. Uh, it's, it's well worth researching because it's really kind of interesting stuff, but um, that's what Google is for. So what we're going to enter here for the X offset is going to be cos open brackets, time times 0 0.02, close brackets. Sorry, I meant 0 0.03, let's um, do this right. 0 0.03 is going to be 327, not 237. So then for the Y offset, add expression, this is going to be sine, open brackets, time times 0 0.02, close brackets. And for the Z offset, expression, we're going to type again sine, open brackets, time, times 0 0.07, close brackets. And now we'll have to zoom out a bit to see the result of our labors. What I've admitted to do, however, is to set this region here small enough. So let's go for 0 0.01. So that makes a much tidier. In fact, let's go for 0 0.001. We want it to be really nice and tight. So there's no kind of positional variance there. So what I also need to do is to set up my timeline. So I'm going to go for a thousand frames and we'll also set the lifespan to be say 1500 frames. And now I'm going to just kind of cache that result so you can see how this has worked. So we're getting towards the end of the cache here. You can see it building up this shape. You can see what a nice uh, Lissajou effect from that angle there and a different one from this angle here. And that basically is the effect. So all we need to do now really is to make this look a little bit nicer. Now, one thing I always like to do is to make sure that I'm sitting above the ground plane. Here, obviously, because we're using sine and cosine, we're going through zero and it means we're going through the floor on the Y axis. So in order to fix that, I'm going to add a 3D transform 
after the uh, render node. And I'm going to move it up on Y by 1.1. I want to get, allow myself a little bit of extra space for the box that this is going to sit in. And now you can see that's just sort of sitting above the floor just sufficiently like so. So next let's make a box. So I'm going to select a 3D shape, set it to cube. I'm going to set the size to 2.2 and transform. I'm going to set that Y translation to 1.1. So now it's going to match up with our particles. Obviously you can't see, but you can see it's, it's perfectly disguising them there. If I just uh, reduce its opacity, you'll see how it's working. Now, obviously, depending on the angle we look at, we are going to see the particles or not. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to construct the box and the floor in a different chain, and then we're going to combine them uh, later after they've been rendered. So that's my box. Let's look at that. And let's also make a floor. So let's add another 3D shape. The, so the second 3D shape is going to be a plane. Let's make it 20 for the size. Transform an X rotation of negative 90. And then I just want to bring it down very, very slightly on Y. So it's not on exactly the same plane as the box. So I'm going to go for negative 0.001. So next, let's add a 3D render node to the end of our merge there. Let's add a camera and let's add a three point light. So the light I'm going to move up to 2.2 on Y. Uh, let's go for 1.1 on X and Z. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit further just because we're setting this up, setting up this material here. Let's go for 1.5 instead. Okay, uh, let's also set up the camera. I'm going to go for a focal length of 45. Let's open up the pivot, add an expression to the Z. Let's pick up the Z translation. Let's add a negative sign to the front of that. So that's going to allow us to pivot it much more easily. And let's set its Z translation to 12 and the Y translation to one just for the time being. So let's have a look at how that looks. And let's also make sure the renderer has got the lighting turned on. And then I'm just going to rotate the camera a little bit on Y so we can see how our material is shaping up. So next I'm going to add a blin and I'm going to use these two textures that I've got here. I've got my dirty glass and glass cracks and I'm just going to merge the two together. And then let's just turn down the alpha gain so we get an additive blend of the two and just adjust the size till they fit. And then I'm going to use that for the blends uh, diffuse input. So that's going to look like that. I'm going to add a luma here so we can affect the specularity. So I'm going to take the output of that merge into the luma here. That's more or less OK. And I'm going to add that to the specular intensity of the blin. So now we can add that to our box, that one there. So let's add that. Let's look at the rendered output. So that blin, I'm going to reduce the opacity down to 0.3. Then let's sort out the floor. I'm going to add another blin. I'm going to use this floor for the specularity of the um, of the blin. So again, we'll add a luma here, and let's add that to the blin's specular input. So the blin is looking like that, and let's just reduce its color. Let's have 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And so you can see that luma here. We probably just need to adjust it a little bit just to get a little bit more kind of specularity going on. That's probably going to do us. And now we can take that blin and add it to the floor and see what we've got. Let's add a background node. Uh, let's pipe the renderer output over the background so we can get a better idea of how it's all looking. It always looks very different once you've added that black in there. OK, so what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take my point light and I'm going to add a 3D duplicate to it. I want four copies. And 
I want a Y rotation of 90. And that's going to put one at each corner of the box. I'm just going to adjust the translation of the light. So I'm going to go for 1.2 on the X and Z. So it's really just put those on the, on the corners. And let's also just make an adjustment to this. Let's uh, give it a bit of a bluish cast. Let's switch its decay rate to linear. And you can see that's a lot nicer now. I'm just going to reduce the decay rate a little bit like so. And perhaps the intensity as well. So there you go, that's our box. And we could do a lot more with it, but um, I'm going to just concentrate again on the uh, other aspect of the scene, uh, which is the particles. So I'm going to add a 3D render to the end of that. And our particles look like this. We obviously need to use our camera and add that to that 3D merge there. Also going to just rotate that camera using an expression. So I'm going to right click on the Y there and I'm going to type time times 0.25 plus 270. I'm going to out take the output of that renderer and add it over the top of the, in fact, this renderer here. I want it before the, the, the background merge. I'm going to turn down the alpha gain and now let's add an extra light to our background scene. So add another three point light, add it to this merge here. So I've renamed that as follow light because I want it to follow the growing path of the particles. So to do that, I am going to come to its transform and add an expression for the Z. And then I'm going to type P emitter one dot sphere RGN, sphere region dot translate dot X. Then I'm going to copy that, add an expression to the Y, paste that in there, Y. And here I want to do plus 1.1 at the end because obviously we moved the, the overall thing up by 1.1, the, the, the particle effect, I should say. So add the expression to the Z and change the X to a Z. So now we've got a light that is following the growing particles. And obviously we want to see it on the inside of the box. And we're seeing it here on the floor, but, but we want it to illuminate the inside faces of the box. So we're going to come to the blin for the box, and that's that one there. And we need to turn on two-sided lighting. And now you can see the difference that makes. That light is now illuminating the inside of the box. It's a little bit faint, so let's come back to the light. Let's switch its decay type to linear, and you can see that light there, uh, how it's hitting the box as it passes. Reduce the decay, and that gives us a bit more spread. So let's just look at it over the background. There we go, that's the effect we're having. Now what we also want is a sphere that is the leading edge of these particles. So I'm going to make another 3D shape. I'm going to select sphere, and I'm going to pipe the, that vortex element into it. I needn't worry too much about having a blin, it's just good, meant to look like that. So then I'm going to add this into the merge with the particles, bring that into there. Huge, great ball there. Let's just adjust its size, obviously. Let's set its radius to 0 0.075, and that's much more like what we want. So then we need to obviously again attach it to the front of the particles, and we're simply going to do the same thing with attaching it to the emitter itself. So I'll very quickly do that. You've seen me do this before. So I've just typed that quickly for you. You see p emitter one dot sphere region dot translate dot x. So I can then add that to the y, add expression, paste that in there, switch to y plus 1.1, don't forget, and then expression on the Z, paste that in there, and switch that to Z. So now the ball is attached to, to the head of the particles. So then I want to make some glow, so I'm going to add a basic blur node, and I'm going to take the output of that renderer there, that's the, the ball and the particles, into that blur node, set the blur size to 5, and then 
I'm going to copy and paste that blur node. I'm going to set the size to 20 and the blend to 0.5. And then I might just do it again. Command C, Command V and increase the blur size to 60. Set that blend around to 0.15. Then I might also just add a color gain and just do a little bit of kind of blue colorization of it. So then what I can do is I can take that and I can merge it over the top of that renderer there. So let's add a, a merge in there, take the color gain, add it into that merge. I've got this the wrong way around. That renderer output needs to go into the blur. The color gain needs to go into the merge. There we go. Again, let's turn down the alpha gain so we get that kind of glowing effect. So with and without looks like that. And our final result looks like that. And you can see how well that blur works to give us this kind of glowing effect. So let's do some additional tidying up. One of the things I want to do is that currently these particles look more like a string of pearls than a continuous thread. So I, I need to do two things here. One of which is to come to my emitter. And here where I entered that original expression, instead of one, I'm going to have two. So that gives us an increased set of particles. And then I'm going to come to the particle render node and I'm going to increase the subframe accuracy to two. And that, as you see, results in this much smoother effect. I'm also going to come over to my ball and what I want to do is add an expression to its rotation. So let's have time on the X and also on the Z. The other thing I want to do is have an inner box, which is, I think, going to help me look quite a lot. So I'm going to take that box and copy and paste it. I need the same blin input to that box, and I'm going to add it to the merge in there. But what I'm going to do is very slightly reduce its scale. So let's go for 2.175. And you can see that's just slightly brought it in. Now we've got getting this strange sort of uh, ghosting effect because that's where we're looking at exactly the same texturing on both boxes. And we can fix that by coming to the transform and rotating it by, for example, 180 degrees on X. And now we've got a much more complex look. So that's without and that's with. We've got some much more interesting texture going on in there. And also just that extra little hint of this double box here just gives us a bit more sort of 3D realism. I think that just helps a little bit as well. Another thing I think it would be nice to have is some ambient occlusion. So I'm going to take that renderer, which is the output of the, the box and the floor scene, and let's add an ambient occlusion after that. Let's make sure the renderer has got the required output channels. So we need Z and we need normal. And then we also need to pipe the camera output into the ambient occlusion. So let's grab that and add that. Might just reduce the kernel radius a little bit. Just a little bit of a gamma adjustment on there. And the difference that makes is quite considerable. It just uh, sits it in a lot better. Probably gone too far with the darkening there, but, but you get the idea. Let's remove that gamma. And finally, I just want a little bit of extra interest in my background. So I'm going to add a fast noise and I'm going to merge it over the background. Let's make it very dark like that, something like that. And then let's add to the merge a circular mask, elliptical mask. Let's set the height to two. And let's have a bit of soft edging on it. It's going to force something like 0.1. And the effect of that is just in the background there. It might be too subtle for you to see. Uh, let's, let's make it a little bit brighter so you can see better. You can see it kind of gives a kind of nice background glow there. And let's maybe just reduce that width down to, say, 0.35. Just wants to sort of sit nicely behind the box. And uh, so... I'm, as I say, I've kind of over, over ex exaggerated that. It wants to be kind of really as subtle as you can make it, but it's definitely going to, it's good, definitely going to help with your scene. And also, I think maybe the old, the floor is too bright, and we could fix that by changing the blin 
this color here we could reduce down a lot. So let's go down 2.2. We'd even add a little bit of blue into that, so 0.25 on the floor just maybe it helps with the overall effect of it. But I'm not going to go into any more uh, fine tuning of this. It's uh, something you can very easily do yourself. So that's the project. Um, I hope it's been an interesting one. It's, I think this will be my last exploration of Lissajou, but you never know. It's, it's a pretty fascinating subject. So I hope it's been interesting. Thanks very much indeed for watching.